Greetings, humanoids of the internet. My name is Bob, and this is episode... Why can't I remember this shit? Episode 23 of... Journey into Space. Oh, wait, that shit's not right. Hold on. Journey into Space. Okay, today, uh, first I want to give a shout out to uh, Zachariah1688. Uh, I made him a, um, he was having some um, Duna ship troubles, and I made him a stock Duna ship out of stock parts, and uh, he uh, just successfully in his most recent video uh, sent that ship to Duna, so I want to give him a shout out. I will put a link to his channel and to the video in the comments. All right, first up today, well, actually, we got a couple things going on today. We have actually three things going on today. Three things going on today. Um... First up is um, actually something I wanted to try, uh, an electric airplane, uh, a solar-powered airplane. Uh, that's the first, and that's, that's, that has totally unrelated to the rest of what we're doing. We, I just wanted to do it. Um, then secondly, we're going to send two probes. We're going to send try to send a probe to uh, Moho, the planet nearest the sun, uh, which is a very difficult planet to get to. Uh, and we also need to send a, a probe to uh, Ike. Uh, the reason why we're sending a probe to Ike uh, is uh, we're trying to check out the Keythane resources on Ike so that we can uh, decide where we're going to put our, our Ike base, because the main point of having uh, the base on Ike will be to uh, be, have access to the Keythane resources uh, to help missions going to uh, Jewel. Uh, so that we got a full plate on it, on our, our plate, a full plate on our plate. We have a full meal on our plate today, so let's get started. Okay, we're going to get to our uh, probes uh, to the planets uh, here very shortly. I wanted to test out this design, though. Uh, this is a electric space plane. Now, the electric engines um, that you may see in different mods are kind of modeled on um, electric engines in real life. There's these thing called, things called ion engines uh, that are very efficient for, like, deep space spacecraft. Um, they're very, very efficient, much even, even more efficient than nuclear. Uh, however, uh, there's a couple of... Um, major and important differences between uh, electric engines in uh, KSP and in real life. Uh, one thing, electric engines in real life, they don't work in an atmosphere. Um, th in KSP, they do. Um, in KSP, they have much more thrust than um, uh, than uh, the real real life ion engines do. Uh, to get the amount of thrust that I've got here out of, out of ion engines, you'd need an ion engine the size of the Empire State Building, pretty much. Um, so um, that's uh, some some major differences between electric engines in real life and in the KSP. Uh, and also, um, if you're just starting out in KSP, don't do this uh, because um, it's essentially you could could consider it more or less a cheat uh, because it doesn't use fuel. Fuel, um, you know, these these engines are are way overpowered considering the fact that they don't actually even use fuel. Uh, they just use electricity. Here's solar panels for collecting solar energy. Here's a battery. Um, so if you're just starting out in KSP, uh, don't do this. Um, you know, it's, it's it's important to to actually learn the ropes through normal, non un, you know spacecraft that aren't unbalanced and unrealistic. Uh, this is an un, unbalanced and unreal, unrealistic spacecraft. But uh, I've wanted to try this for a while, and so I'm going to go ahead and try it. An electric space plane. Save and launch. I don't know how much thrust I'm going to get here or whether we're going to have enough thrust to get off the ground. We'll have to see. That yeah, looks like it. Let's 
Okay, now what I was talking about, it being uh, unbalanced, uh, this, this aircraft could basically go anywhere. It could go to Jewel, uh, it could go to, it certainly could go to Minimus, it could go to Bob. I mean, I'm not Bob, but it could go to, yeah, it could go to Bob, it could go to Moho, uh, because it doesn't use fuel. It's just going to keep on going, you know. As long as there's sunlight, it's just going to keep on going, you know. I just, I can just point it out here, and it's just going to go, go, until it, you know, until it falls apart or something. No. Now I'm going to use the uh, these these engines also on uh, on my uh, uh, probe to um, Ike um, because I don't really I don't have anything to prove in that in, as far as Ike goes. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind I can go to Ike any day of the week. You know, so um, I just um, I gotta get, gotta go ahead and use these for for Ike just for grins because I like them. Um, and uh, for for going to Moho, I may do it old school. I'm not sure. Yeah, this thing would just keep on going indefinitely. And you can just point it off here, and it's going to, you know, put on the SAS. It's going to keep on going in that direction forever. You know, as long as there's sunlight. Okay, let's see how it lands. Oh, pull up. Doing a high speed, uh, doing a high speed uh, maneuver there. Uh, so like I say, if you're just starting out in KSP, don't use this. Uh, well you might, if you're just starting out, you might find it hard to find the mods to use it. But uh, you know, don't use it. Until you got, you need to learn how to, to do it uh, right uh, before you before you cheat like me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the way with anything. You know, cooking, art, or anything else. Uh, you got to learn uh, to uh, learn the rules before you break the rules. And I'm breaking them this time. Big time. Oh, lag. And it, 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 in this case, it allows you to have an airplane that has almost no weight. I mean, there's no fuel tank. There's there's is there's, there's little tiny engines. You know, it's, it weighs nothing. So you could actually literally take this uh, space plane to Moho, or Bop, or any any other s place in the solar system. No problems, as long as there's sunlight. Oh, uh, check this out. Notice something about my uh, map view? That's right. There's no freaking debris. I went through and edited by hand um, the uh, persistence file. Uh, so there's no, there's no, no uh, space junk anymore. Oh, look at that. No, no junk. Because it was starting to really lag bad. So I figured it's time to clean stuff out. Okay. Yep, there's my super cheating airplane. It'll go anywhere. I mean, actually, probably probably would have a problem with um, landing horizontally in different places. You have to put landing legs in the back, or you can put some engines on under here. In fact, I might do that.
just for grins. So that I could literally land it anywhere. I'd have to turn the engines off before I take off. Actually, you probably couldn't land anywhere. You had you, if you had like a place like uh, Tylo that had uh, high gravity and no atmosphere, you probably couldn't land this there. Uh, but uh, there, there wouldn't be any problem getting to it. Put it put that way. You would, we'd have a problem getting down to the ground. You wouldn't have a problem getting there. Yeah, buddy. And now it's vertical takeoff. <laughs> Is that boss or what? I need to try that out right quick. Yeah, look how fast the uh, energy is recharging here. So I got all these solar panels. Take this to Minmus, land horizontally. First problem is they don't they don't uh, <coughs> they're not considered a pair, so you have to do, do them individually. Try a vertical uh, landing here. Is the thing is so light, uh, it's hard to get it down this way. Uh oh, lag, lag, lag.
Yeah, the problem is that the um, the um, the wings create so much uh, lift compared to the um, the weight of the spacecraft that uh, it's just crazy. I'll be doing this all day. On to the uh, probes. The probes. Okay, here is our Moho probe, and it's quite a monstrosity. Um, I had to make the um, the actual lander part of everything uh, kind of bigger than uh, it normally would be, uh, because um, uh, and I've got this 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 big old engine uh, sitting here on a, on an upper stage, and that engine weighs a lot. Uh, now, you may be asking yourself, self, why is Bob putting that huge mainsail engine on an upper stage? The answer is, um, uh, if I just were to put a, a engine that's good enough, this is the uh, the stage for decelerating into Moho. Uh, if I were to put an engine that's just good enough for to carry this upper stage and all, uh, that it would actually uh, overheat and would not be able to generate enough thrust to, uh, to stop me. Um, and so I've got this mainsail engine. Figuring I probably will only use about a quarter of its capacity, and so it won't overheat, and so I'll be able to get this all, this big thing down. Um, so that's the thinking behind that, which is um, the the bigger the engine I have, the le the less of its capacity I have to use, and so uh, even if it over, over overheats a lot, you know, if I have it on one quarter thrust, it's probably not going to overheat, uh, and so that's um, that's my thinking there. Um, I've also got parachutes. Um, I, I've heard that Moho has an atmosphere, but it's just not very thick. So, worst comes to worst, we may have maybe using those. Uh, and I've got it, um, I've got it uh, put up here so high because it's uh, so big that it would uh, bump into the, the launch tower. So, and for the the uh, outermost strap-on stage, I've got these uh, jet engines to lift it up, uh, figuring that that will save more fuel uh, to be sucked in by the 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 engines, the the uh, rest of the engines here. So, alrighty. And the reason why I'm going with stock parts on this is I'm kind of testing on on uh, lag because uh, um, I, I have been using uh, mod parts for most of my boosters because uh, in the idea that you know using pure parts you'll get less lag. However, I think that these these stock parts are now kind of optimized for uh, for performance a bit, and so I'm thinking that possibly. This might actually be better as far as lag is concerned. So we'll find out. Uh, all right, let's land. Let's let's launch it. Okay, uh, I may had to make some modifications because even as tall as this is, it was still colliding with the launch tower. Uh, so um, I had to make some uh, minor modifications as far as the height and the placement of these uh, external most boosters. Uh, but uh, looks like we are uh, ready to go. Uh, the lag, considering the size of this uh, rocket, is not as bad as I would expect it to be. I would expect it to be getting like zero frames a second. Uh, so it may be that my theory that the the, the stock parts have been optimized a bit uh, and may be better for um, a lag now um, that may be, may be accurate. So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll try to, I'll try to record this and maybe the lag will be too bad, but uh, we'll see. Throttle to maximum, SAS on. In three, two, one. Overheating, I'm overheating bad. I don't know what the deal is. Uh oh. Bad news. Bad news bears. No 
bueno. Okay, I'm running on the theory that the jet engines were the main cause of the overheating problem I had. And so I've only got one on each of these uh, external, most external uh, boosters. Uh, now, if that one over overheats, I'm probably just going to have to let it overheat. Because uh, I, 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 the lag is such that I don't have that much throttle control. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. In three, two, one. Okay, that was interesting. That's not good. No bueno. Okay, here we go again. In three, two, one. That's uh, sinking. That's holding its own. Oh no, it's falling apart. Nope, nope. Error. Yeah, good God. Okay, so so using jet engines on those external uh, boosters not gonna work. The hell are these? Okay, what what happened all here? Oh. Oh, I didn't have these on the uh, right stage. That probably didn't help. Alrighty, let's try that again. Uh, hmm. I wonder if I should uh, put something on there to... Uh, help it a bit as far as getting off the pad. That's not going to go very far. Hmm. Alright, well let's try this and if this doesn't work then we'll just uh, uh, we will let me, let me move these up here right quick. Give it a chance to work right. Okay, we'll try this one more time. Uh, if this is another failure, then uh, we'll forget about using jet engines on this one. Okay, waiting for physics to kick in. I've got the explosion set down low on this, but uh, the last explosion just damn near punched my ear eardrums out. Hopefully that won't happen again. Say yes on. That's a slow lift off, but it's a lift off. Alright, well you're just going to have to overheat. There's no, no two ways about that.
Okay, we're on the last three external boosters. Would like to get a little higher on that. happened there? Okay, RCS shield tank. Okay, I had to, I managed to get this big cow into orbit. Um, I um, had to get rid of my um, the, the descent stage that had the big mainsail engine on it. Uh, I also uh, had to use a little bit of my nuclear uh, propulsion to uh, uh, to get into orbit. Uh, I still got over three quarters of this tank and then into all of this tank, uh, so probably it'll be okay. Uh, but not ideal, but but we'll work with it. Now I've got to figure out how to uh, get a line to to go to Moho. Okay, we're working on trying to get our um, uh, periapsis down to uh, Moho. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of nuclear fuel left, uh, so we um, don't have a whole lot of fuel for nuclear engines left. And so it's going to be kind of dicey getting there. We'll just have to see how it all goes. Oops. Okay. Okay, and now in addition to everything else I'll have to do, I'll have to do an inclination burn uh, when I get about halfway out. So uh, we will take take things up uh, as they progress. Okay, we missed our encounter with Moho. Um, I'm I'm probably going to uh, give this up as lost uh, for right now. If we ever do try to do Moho again, we might uh, try to do some kind of in-flight refueling or something because uh, it takes a lot of fuel to get there. Um, so um, we're going to uh, give this up as lost and um, uh, move on to our our uh, next probe, which is uh, a something to map Keithane deposits on uh, Ike, which is going to be our colonization target uh, whenever we get around to colonizing something. Uh, we're going to colonize Ike, and so we need to know where the Keithane deposits are so we can use those uh, as a resource. Uh, so uh, you see I'm almost out of uh, fuel here except for... Uh, on the nuclear stage, I'm almost out of fuel except for these little tanks here, uh, so it's kind of a kind of a lost cause. Uh, so we we may have to revisit Moho at some point, uh, visit the great great sphincter sphincter of Moho, uh, the or the or otherwise known as the great uh, brown brown spot uh, of Moho, uh, uh, but uh, we're not going to do that right away. So we're going to go ahead and abort this mission. Okay. Let's see. Ike probe. Okay, in comparison, our Ike probe is, is probably going to be pretty uh, un unproblematic. Uh, it's got a, a simple basic booster going on here. Uh, and an electric powered um, uh, probe, uh, which I could have done an electric power probe um, to uh, uh, to um, blah, 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 Moho, uh, but uh, the, the electric electric power thing is kind of really a cheat almost. Uh, I mean, it, it's basically you 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 get infinite propulsion for nothing but sunlight. You know, 
there's actually no real real world for both postal system that works like that. Uh, uh, ion engines are is the uh, real world uh, electric propulsion, but it uses some fuel. I mean, it's not totally uh, fuel free. I mean, compared to nuclear, it's uh, it's even even much more efficient than nuclear, but it still uses some fuel. This didn't use any fuel at all. It just used sun uses sunlight. Uh, so, uh, but since I've been to Ike a lot of times, I'm not worried about proving whether I can get, go there or not. I know I can. Uh, and I'm just trying to get this uh, probe into orbit around it so I can get this keythane detector to map the keythane on Ike so that when we go to uh, uh, to land a colony on Ike, uh, we'll know where the keythane is and we can make um, use of that. Uh, and let's see, anything else I need to look at here? Nope, looks pretty straightforward. Let's check out my staging. Yep, there's three there. And that one goes first. Yep. That one goes second. Yep, no problemos. All right, let's launch this thing. And hopefully we'll have a bit less lag uh, than we had with the uh, Moho probe. It's a much smaller rocket. Okay, throttle to maximum. SAS on. Actually, we're going to have the throttle to two thirds uh, to start out with. We don't need all that power trying to push it against the atmosphere because that'll just that'll just create waste. So. All right, in uh, three, two, one. No, oh, I need a little more power than that. No problem. I should have used separate trons. Yep, uh oh. Okay, the Ike probe now with uh, separate trons. I'm not so sure about my arrangement of these, we're gonna find out. Uh, in three, two, one. Okay, we're going to test our little Sepatron uh, arrangement here, see how that works, whether it will collide with the rocket and blow the whole thing up. In three, two, one. <laughs> okay, that was a fail. That was not good. <laughs> Okay, the reason why I'm being so picky about my placement of my Sepatrons is because um, you can actually damage your own ship with the exhaust from it. So uh, 
and with this configuration you don't have a whole lot of different options as far as putting the separatrons on that will work that will not you know bla blast onto the other parts of the rocket so uh, let's throttle up not that much no oh, okay In three two one go <laughs> Okay, moment of truth coming up. In three, two, one. Oh, that worked. A bit wobbly, I don't think it'll be okay. Okay. Getting all that that uh, sunshine there on the solar panels. Right, let's throttle up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! <laughs> that was a little scary. Okay, debris is landing. Yeah, okay. Alrighty.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jettison this. Um, and I guess I shouldn't. I mean, I, I probably could just, just take the rest away on the electric engines, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and use the nuclear. Or use the uh, the main booster. I want to try to clean up after myself a little bit better this time around because editing that uh, uh, persistence file is kind of a hassle. So whenever I dump this stage, I'm going to select it and go to it and, and uh, end this mission because uh, it's a hassle having all that junk flying around. Actually, it's not so much a hassle having the junk flying around except for the, the lag it causes. And it's a real hassle too. When the, the lag gets too bad, you have to uh, edit the persistence file and that's a pain in the butt. All right, good enough. Okay, now we're going to do our uh, time compression to get to where we got a good alignment with uh, Duna going on. And I'll restart the video when that happens. Okay, I'm back. I had to do a redesign and a relaunch because uh, it turns out that the uh, probe part of the, the thing had some major stability issues and uh, I had also uh, actually uh, launched for uh, Duna a bit uh, prematurely uh, which is actually one of the worst things you can do. I mean if you if you launch a little late uh, that's correctable without a whole lot of hassle I mean, depending on how, how late you launch but I mean if you're a little late that's not, not a big deal. Like here I'm a little bit late but not not a huge amount uh, but if you go early you're gonna have to wait till the next go round uh, so I screwed up that. I haven't been having a whole lot of luck today. <laughs> having having bad luck, even with things that shouldn't have should be shouldn't be causing a problem um, like this. Um, but oh well, this is life. Okay. Actually, that that is very near perfect. I mean, just a little bit off. Um, You know, periapsis is big. Okay, well, I will um, uh, get about halfway around and start working on uh, my encounter a bit. And I will um, restart when something happens. When something interesting happens. Okay, I've got an encounter with Ike, so we'll come on in. Since I'm not going to be air braking at uh, Duna, I probably will require a lot of uh, fuel to do my braking at Ike, but I've still got part of the core core booster left, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. What? Let's see how my periapsis at Ike is. Yeah, it's kind of funky, but uh, I'm not going to worry too much about uh, getting the uh, periapsis down there, I don't think. Well, let's take a look at it.
Quick save. We're going to be getting into a sort of a polar orbit here, but uh, actually that's what we want for the mapping, uh, the uh, Keithane mapping. Uh, we want a polar orbit, so that's going to work out fine. Well, it's getting less polar now. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to wind up being more, more or less of equatorial over now. Let us... See if we can jack that around a little bit. No, yeah. going the wrong way. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's not where the sun is. All right, let's try this. Yeah, it's still going to wind up being an equatorial orbit, but that's not a big deal. Or mostly your equatorial orbit. Semi equatorial orbit. Okay. Uh, we still got uh, the, I uh, got my stock Duna craft that I, I uh, tested out. Uh, uh, so I could I could put up uh, put up a uh, a stock you know, uh craft that didn't didn't use all my weird mods, um and and that's that and there's the uh, Planet Explorer eight lander B still in orbit around Duna, uh still waiting for their ride home or or waiting to to go home themselves if they if I have enough fuel for them. Uh, one of these days we'll get these guys home. Hey guys, enjoying your perpetual orbit around Duna? <laughs> I don't know how long that mission has been going on, but it's been going on for a while. Let me take a look at it. Yep, there you are. Ken Gunn, Raymore, and Dantop. Mm-hmm. 
But you're kind of sorry that you went along with this mission, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> 2,287 days. Oh, God. About ready to collect your retirement, huh? If you ever get back to Kerbin. Yep, just floating around above Duna. Pondering your fate. The terrible, sad fate that me meant that you came to rescue some other guys and you got stuck left behind. Yep. Raymore, you were you were the captain of the um, the guys who got to go home, but you were a pussy, so I put you here. <laughs> That's what you get for being a pussy. Although Dan Tops didn't want to do most of the screaming right now. Okay. Just thought I'd come visit you guys, see how you're doing. Gotta bring you up any newspaper or anything? <laughs> you know, cappuccino or something? Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll be sure to do that on the next mission to, to, to Duda. I'll, I'll bring you some uh, some newspapers, some coffee, magazines, that sort of thing. <laughs> okay. Back to business. Oh, where's my ship? Okay. Let's get some time compression going on here. There is Ike. Well, it looks like we're in a collision course. We're not. That angle might not be too bad uh, because most probably most likely the places I'm going to uh, want to uh, stick a colony are going to be around the equator, equator anyway. Uh, so you know, if I get a swath about that big, you you can't see my I turned off my uh, my cursor. Uh, if we get a, about um, about uh, half of the planet around the around the equator, uh, that that would make me reasonably happy because. Uh, yeah, probably not, I'm not going to land, try to land a colony on the poles. Uh, so, the angle that we got now is probably okay. I'll have to see when, when, when we actually get, get in orbit. But. Okay. Getting ready for our Ike encounter. It's going to take us a while to burn into to orbit, so we'll start our uh, our burn a little early here. And hopefully I'll fix the stability problems with the probe part of it itself. Uh, I'll be uncool if I didn't. The problem was I put the, the I have these little uh, SAS units and I put it on the side of the ship instead of on the you know, going straight up and down. So that was probably the cause, and I fixed that. So that was probably what the problem was. I have a whole lot of fuel left in there. Okay. Let's see. 
I'm going to actually spin around a little bit if I can. It's, it's that way, that way, the separation is more likely to be clean. Of course, it also could mean that the probe's going to tumble out of control. Uh, but oh well, shit happens. Okay, well, separation was good. And we're sort of almost back under control. Okay. Whoa, what the hell? That was weird. Okie dokies. We're going to go ahead and end this flight. I don't want to leave any junk flying around. Now, with any luck, I'll be able to break into to orbit here. Oh, I gotta, I do separ separation. Got plenty of energy. Let's throttle up. And we're breaking in just fine. No problems. No problemos. Okay, let's get a little closer to our periapsis. Like that. Fifty six, we'll bring that down about the same. Having these electric engines is almost like having the you know the warp drive on the Enterprise because you, know, you can go you don't have to worry about fuel you know it's just not an issue. I could probably could go to Moho on these engines without any problems at all, but that would kind of be cheating. And if I'd already been to Moho, then I wouldn't have a problem with using them. But I haven't been to Moho yet because my probe failed. Damn it! I'll have to readdress that. Uh, that issue at some point, not today. Eh, yeah, close enough. Let's take a look at Moho, or not Moho, Ike. Okay, Ike, looking good. Now, let's think about inclination issues. Actually, that's and that's going to cover, you know, the, the all the the, pro, the areas which I'm most likely to actually put a base on. Uh, so that's actually going to work okay. I'm not even going to screw with it. Uh, now, uh, one problem is that um, in the past, at least, the Keythane um, mod plugin has had some problems working with MechJeb, and this is an unmanned probe with MechJeb uh, on it, so. And with that, we'll have a problem. I don't know when we can find out. Let's turn on the detectors. Okay.
and we will use time compression. Yeah, that's going to cover all the areas I'm going to want to land on anyway. Now let's see. Let's see if it'll actually do it at uh, four time the four notches up here. Yeah, it will. I think probably I'll start getting gaps if I go go too get too. Oops. Got Keithane. That's not on the side that I want to colonize. But I got Keithane. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Let's quick say right quick. I think uh, Ike is tightly locked to um, Duna. I'm not absolutely sure about that. Hold on, I'll check. Okay, uh, Ike and Duna are tightly locked to each other, uh, which means probably uh, most of the areas I could land would be on this big dark feature. I think there are some light areas over here, uh, which I don't want to really want to land on the, the, the dark spots. Oh! Got something down there. Of course, there's plenty of light spots over here, but uh, it'd be nice to have the uh, have Duna in the. Uh... Oh. Got a pot spot over there. That noise is slightly annoying. One problem with this orbit is it's not um, the the paths aren't really overlapping each other too well. Uh, but uh, well, there's a big old deposit right there. Okay, well I probably don't want to bore you to death with me mapping uh, Ike uh, for Keithane. Uh, so I guess we will wind up this episode, uh, and next time we are going to continue our continue our colonization efforts uh, to colonize Ike, including possibly uh, landing a, a rover to scout scout stuff out. Uh, and we will uh, see you. Okay, be, be be quiet, dude. Hush. Hush. Thank you. <laughs> we will continue our colonization efforts uh, of Ike next time, including possible. I might, might land uh, a rover there, uh, time to check out some spots. Uh, we will have to see. Uh, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Okay, an addendum. Looks like we've found our uh, our ideal um, colony spot. Uh, it's in the light area. Uh, it's facing uh, Duna. Uh, I think that's going to be a good spot. Uh, May not be as large a patch of Keithane as uh, some of them, but um, sure it'll be be fine for us. So yeah, anyway, that's just a quick addendum. Okay, here we go again. In three, two, one. Uh, thank you.
bubbly, bubbly thing. Bad news bears. No. 